John, we were just talking yesterday about how uh, perhaps surprisingly we hadn't had a response from Beijing on these numerous travel restrictions from some 10 countries. This reaction that we've seen really kind of shows that COVID remains a politically sensitive topic. Uh, certainly it does, Heidi. Uh, the, the government here in Beijing needing to show it is defending uh, China's prestige, uh, the rights of Chinese citizens to travel abroad, uh, hitting back saying that they will uh, retaliate against measures they feel are excessive, are unacceptable, uh, against measures that they believe are being put in place purely for political reasons. Uh, obviously, uh, with the wave of infections that we've had here, uh, uh, crowds of hospitals, uh, mounting deaths, the, the government does need to take uh, some action to show that it's, uh, you know, helping uh, the Chinese citizenship deal with uh, everything that's happening around them. I was going to say, how much does the Chinese public care about all of these diplomatic spats when, in fact, at home you're seeing bodies piling up? Tell us a little bit about how bad the situation is. Well, I think the absolute number of deaths that, that we're seeing here in China as a result of COVID it is striking. Uh, the number of people at funeral homes, the wait that now is required to get a spot at a crematorium is uh, simply put unbelievable uh, I mean we've we've have reporting that uh, people uh, who've passed away are having to wait f you know up to five days uh, the body at home before the crematorium or the funeral home can come and come and get the body uh, where we have reporting that uh, there are long lines people showing up at three in the morning for a spot at a crematorium uh, to, to get a number for a spot at a crematorium that is not headed out until noon and so obviously a great deal, uh, unfortunately, of activity of funeral homes. Uh, we have not seen that in the official data. Uh, that's partly why there's been this concern in the U.S. and Europe and other parts of the world. There's that sentiment being shared on social media. We couldn't afford to live under lockdown and now we can't afford to die. Just uh, so tragic, John. And I do wonder, the, the government's handling of COVID zero and now the handling of basically, it, with one fell swoop, the, the dramatic opening up, is that going to have ramifications on the leadership? I think it depends. Uh, so far, as we as we speak, the absolute number of people who are dying is, is quite large. But as a percentage of the population, it is still relatively small. The vast number of people uh, who have been infected, who've had COVID here in Beijing and other parts of China, they've had relatively light cases. Most people recover very quickly. We've already started to see in the economic data and the activity data that places like Beijing, like Shanghai, like Zhengzhou, where the iPhone factory is, uh, people are going back to work. The economy is coming back. And so I think if uh, mounting numbers of deaths are combined with uh, a really robust economic rebound where people see a brighter future, better job prospects, better business prospects, then I, I think those things might balance out. It, it might just see this country, the government, muddle through the next couple of months.